We're going to talk about God today. I think sometimes in my own personal life, I've kind of forgotten about who he is. Everything's going just great, and, and my life is just all put together like I think it should be. And, and the first thing you know, I kind of forget about God. And I, I don't want that to happen in my life. And yet it's so easy to forget about God. I'm going to go through some things today that I think uh, really frustrate us sometimes. Uh, how busy life is, the hectic life that we live. And I want to read a couple of scriptures this morning and follow along with me if you would. In Psalms 46, 1, it says this, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. He is our security and he is our power, is what he's saying. When we're in trouble, he is our security and he is our power. Psalms 46, 10 says this, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And he is saying to me, Al, be still and know that I am God. And so oftentimes I'm so busy with life. I tell you what, I've had a busy three weeks. <laughs> I guarantee you. I've been going to and fro. I told my, my wife just kind of holds me up, gets me to where I need to go. And she says, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. But there's times when I need to be still and to know that he is God. I want to go through a list of things that I think probably frustrate us. And maybe you can relate to some of these. And I hope your life is just like it should be, the way God wants it to be. And maybe what I'm talking about today may not be relevant to you, but it may be relevant to some of us here today. Listen to some of these things that we face in our busy society today. The first one is, we live in a world that is always on. It never shuts off. 24-7 hustle bustle of life going to and fro. My gracious, when we were down in Texas, cars going everywhere, people's on the road, everything's happening. The news media, 24-7. Nothing turns off. The world is on. And it's that way around the entire world. And then sometimes when we measure success, success is measured by what we have accumulated and not what we have become. And so we spend so much time trying to accumulate things and money and so that we will have houses and cars and we spend so much time. And that's what success is rated by instead of who we really have become. The desire for money has become unquenchable. Oftentimes we sacrifice moral, character, and sometimes family life just to accumulate money. You know, there's nothing wrong with money. I think it's kind of good to have it, don't you? I kind of like money. But I tell you, we've got to be careful that we don't lose our morality, that we don't lose our character, and most of all, that we don't lose our children and our families. And then our minds. Our minds have become addicted and stimulated and validated with social media. I want you to think about social media for just a minute. And I had to put myself in this category. Social media, emails, cell phones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, television, internet, all the things. We spend so much time, the world is there before us, and we become addicted to social media and to the technology that we have. Almost every place you go, there's people that are not looking at you. They have a phone in front of them, sitting in a restaurant. Even a, my wife and I, we were somewhere recently. I don't remember where it was, maybe a restaurant. And she was sitting across. She sent me a text. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm over here. Have you ever had that happen to you? And so we become addicted to this. And we're not still. Where is God at? How many? Now, sometimes I know you're real spiritual. You're reading your Bible on your iPhone. Okay. But sometimes... We get so wrapped up in technology that where is God at in our lives? I saw this recently. God has no cell phone, but I still talk to him. God is not on Facebook, but he's still my friend. And God is not on Twitter, but I'm following him. And that is so true. God isn't there. Be still and know that I am God. And then we live in a noise and loud society. Do you ever notice everything has to be loud today? 
everything. Where do you go where you can find some peace and quiet in our society? Our kids are living within this. Now, the music is always up and radio and, you know, sometimes I pull up to a stop sign and somebody's got their radios going over here out on the base and everything. I'm just sitting there rocking like this. <laughs> They're shaking me half to death. And it's so loud. And it's a society. How in the world can we get in touch with God? You know, as Mother Teresa said this, and she expressed it this way, we need to find God and he can't be found in noise or in restlessness. We need to find God. And those are some things that we experience when it comes to the society in which we're living in today. How do we get in touch with God? How do we hear God? Be still and know that I am God. But then I want to take you to another level where probably a lot of us live. Not necessarily those things without, but possibly those things that live within us. We live in fear. We live in insecurity concerning issues that we're facing, concerning things that we want to control. Let me give you just a few of those. And then we're going to find out how does God help us to filter all of this out of our life and to come in contact with him. Let me give you a list of things that you might think about. Maybe we're on the brink of losing everything that we have. Bankruptcy. We have no money to get the things that we need and that we desire. Maybe it's losing everything. We have fear and insecurity about those things. Maybe it's our marriage that is being torn apart. It's being ripped apart. And we have fear and insecurity about our marriages. Maybe it's our health, such as Pastor Bruce, cancer, heart issues, whatever it may be. And we have fears and insecurity with these things in our life. Maybe it's our job. We're about to lose our job. We cannot find a job. Somebody told me a minute ago they, they have an interview tomorrow. We live in fear. And sometimes we, we don't realize that God's there and wants to help us. And so we have this fear within our lives. Maybe it's our children. Maybe they don't respect us. Maybe they reject us. Maybe they're living in rebellion. Maybe it's our culture, the politics and decadence that we find in America today. And all of these things, they're out there. They're so noisy and so loud. And God simply says, be still and know that I am God. So God addresses these issues that we have constantly. And I'm sure that you were able to relate to some of the things that I just mentioned. But oftentimes, and a couple of times in my life, I ask this question. Where is God? Where's he at? I don't sense God in my life at this particular time. Where is he? And I think God gives us an answer to the question, where is he? Where is he to be found? I'm going to put some scripture up here now. We're going to underline a few things. I want you to follow along. We're going to look at the word still. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. In the English dictionary, the word still means not moving and it means to be quiet. But in the original language, the word still, in this particular case, means stop striving, let go, and surrender. Be still. Stop striving. Let go and surrender. And all these issues that I just mentioned in our life, losing a job, marriage, money, whatever it may be, God says, let me help you with this. Be still. Turn loose of it. Let go of it. I am your security. I am your refuge in verse number one. I am your power. Turn loose. Be still. When do we ever have a time to be still? See, this is bothering us now because I was still. We don't know how to live to be still. Turn loose of it. Let go of it. That's what God is saying to us. There comes a time in our life when we 
must be still. Stop striving. Let go and surrender. And then he says, and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I am God. That means to understand and to recognize who he is. I think we live in a society today around the world that has God down to the same level that we are today. And let me tell you something. God is a great and mighty God. And he is our power and he is our strength and he is our security. He's the one that brought in to this space that we're living in today. The creation, the universe, the stars and everything about it the planets. He is a God that is a mighty God. He's not on our level. And sometimes it's difficult for us to recognize and to understand who he is. In Exodus chapter 14, verse number 14, it says, the Lord will fight your fight for you. Just keep still. It was the Israelites as they were being chased by the Egyptians. And they were complaining to God, why didn't you just leave us back there in Egypt? And we just die back there. Why are we out here in the wilderness? And why are we going to die? And so God is finding a way to uh, deal with Pharaoh. And he has the Israelites camp right at the Red Sea. Right at the sea. I want you to camp there. And then Pharaoh comes with his horses and chariots, 600 of them, and even more than that. And the Israelites see Pharaoh coming in the Egyptians. And they're afraid. They have the wilderness out this way. They have the water this way. What are we going to do? And God just simply said to them, I want you to stay right where you're at. I want you to see what I can do for you. I want you to turn loose. I want you to surrender. And in this scripture, Exodus 14, 14, and he says, and I want you to be still and watch me rescue you. Isn't that the way God operates? But he said, I want you to be still. Of course, the rest of the story, he opened up the Red Sea. They crossed. The Egyptians were covered up with the water in the Red Sea. Be still. Be still. Surrender. Let me have control of whatever it is in your life. In Psalms 46, 1, we read a few minutes ago, he's our refuge, he's our strength. In other words, he is our security, and he is our power. I want to go to another scripture. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah is our example here. We need to discern the voice of God. Let me read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 12. And after the earthquake, fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. A still small voice. Again, you remember the story of Elijah. He just called fire down from heaven. Had a great victory in his life. Jezebel comes along. He says, you know, send somebody to him. And he says, tell you what, uh, Elijah, Jezebel's going to do to you what you did to the prophets of Baal by tomorrow. And if she hadn't killed you, then those uh, prophets of hers can do whatever they want to do. And uh, Elijah became depressed. Elijah took off. And Elijah is found sitting under the juniper tree. And there he is. And he is being depressed. He doesn't know what to do. The angels come and minister to him. Give him water. Give him food. The angels, no matter what it is that you're going through today. If you're depressed, feeling anxiety, feels things out of control, remember one thing. You don't see this world, but the angels of God came to minister to Elijah, gave him food and water. He goes back to sleep. Angels come again, ministers to him. So whatever it is that you're going through right now, and I've experienced this in my own personal life, and I have a feeling, Pastor Bruce is a feeling this now and experiencing it. The angels of God minister us sometimes in our deepest, darkest hour. There's God. Elijah finally gets up and he goes to up on the Mount Harab and he gets into a cave. And there he is inside the cave. It's dark. It's cold. And God comes along and says, hey, Elijah, what are you doing in there? I've got things for you to do. Come on out. And then the Bible says that God told Elijah, I'm going to pass by you 
And I want you to see how God operates in your life. And the Bible says that uh, there was a great uh, wind that came. But yet the Bible said God was not in that wind. It said there was a great earthquake that shook the foundations of that mountain. But God wasn't in that. He wasn't in the earthquake. Now the Bible says that there was a great fire. But the Bible says that God was not in the fire. But it was the still, small voice of God that spoke to him. Now what's he teaching us there? He's teaching us that God is not always in the spectacular. He's not always in the wind and the fire and the earthquake. See, we think that's where God is to be found. That's why in, in so much of our religion today is so high impact. That's where you find God is in that high impact, the noise and all those type of things. The fact of the matter is, God wasn't in those things. God was in the still small voice of God. Now the word still in this scripture means this. In the quiet, calm voice of God. The quiet, calm voice voice of God. The still small voice. Have you ever heard that voice? The still small voice of God. And then we go to another scripture. Let me read it to you. And it's found in um, Mark chapter 4 verse number 39. And he arose talking about Jesus and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. What's the word still mean in this scripture? The word still, the still, peace, be still. It means to be muzzled. He was going to muzzle that wind so it could not do what it wanted to do. And that's what he's talking about. Peace, be still to the wind and to the storm. The Bible said it became calm upon the sea. I was talking to my sons this week and we were talking about this scripture. And one of them said he wondered if there were other boats out there on that sea that day. Other people in those boats. And they were in that storm. And all of a sudden, it's quiet, it's calm. What would they have thought? And I'm sure there were other boats and people out there upon that sea. Peace, be still, be muzzled. You're not going to do what I want you to do. And I want you to see God, how he works in our life. He wants us to be still, turn loose, let it go. The still, calm voice of God wants to muzzle whatever situation that you find yourself in. I want to put some things upon the screen that I want to go through a list. Maybe it's the way you think. It may be the way that I think. But I want you to listen to him. Listen to him very carefully. Sometimes we look at life in a negative way. And we don't realize that God is not a negative God. He's a positive God. And we just don't realize that he wants to work in our lives. And all those negative things that we think about, he's on the other side saying, no, it's not that way. I'm positive. I can help you with whatever it is that you are dealing with. Whatever issue it may be. This is God. And listen to them. You may say it's impossible. You may say it's impossible. And I want you to follow along with this list because it's rather long, rather long. You may say it's impossible. God says all things are possible. Luke chapter 18 verse number 27. You may say I'm too tired. God says I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28 through 30. You may say, nobody loves me. But God says, I love you. John chapter 3, verse number 16. You may say, I can't go on. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. You may say, I don't know which way to turn. God says, I will di direct your steps. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. You may say, I can't do it. God says, through me, you can do all things. You see how the list is going? I may say, he says. I may say, it's not going to happen in my life. It's a negative thing. He says, no, it's not. It's a positive thing. You may look at it and say, well, 
uh, my marriage is tearing apart. I understand that. God is there to help us. Be still and know that I am God. Peace be still. Muzzle. The calm voice of God. It's important that we learn that God is amongst our affairs. He's there to help us, to give us the hope that we need. I don't care how, you know, and, and I, I really feel for Pastor Bruce because I know what he's struggling with and, and how much that, that he wants to get back to do what, what he wants to do and what he's so good at. But, you know, God is still saying to him, but Pastor Bruce, yes, but that time's coming. And when it comes, I'm going to do some greater things with you than I've ever done before. God has a plan. And sometimes we do not see that plan for our lives. You may say, I'm not able. God says, I am able. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. You may say, it's not worth it. God says, it will be worth it. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. You may say, I can't forgive myself. God says, I forgive you. You say, I can't manage. God says, I will supply all your needs. And you may say, I'm afraid. God says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. God hasn't given that to us. You may say, I, I, I'm always worried and frustrated. And God says, just cast all your cares upon me. You may say, I don't have enough faith. God says, I've given everyone a measure of faith. You may say, I'm not smart enough. God says, I give you wisdom. You may say, I feel alone. And God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's quite a list, isn't it? I've said some of those things to God before. And I even say some of them to him today. I just can't do it. But God's going to help us. It's been that way a little bit, uh, filling in for Pastor Bruce. And my wife knows me well enough, and it's, it's a hard thing to do. It's hard to be able to do something for somebody else. The wedding last night was hard. It was difficult. And so I say in my mind, I can't do it. I'm not able to do it. I'm scared. I'm frightened. And I am. But God gives you power. He's your power. He's my security. See, life is so interesting. The issues that we face, and you face your own issues. And I don't know what yours may be. But I guarantee you, everybody sitting here has something that we're dealing with. And sometimes I leave God out of the equation. I, I don't know why. I'd like to think I'm more spiritual than that, but I'm probably not. How many times have I left God out of my situation and out of my life? And I know better. We know better, don't we? But sometimes it happens. Sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of life and, and what's going on out in social media and, and everything seems to be good out there. Everybody's having a great time out there. Everybody's putting, oh, God's an awesome God. You know, people don't even go to church, put that stuff out there. But God, be still and know that I am God. Turn loose. Let go. Surrender. That's hard to do, isn't it? And the quiet voice of God, the still, small voice of God, will minister to you during that time that you're still. Why? Because he said to the, to the, the, to the wind, peace be still. He muzzled it. He takes your situation, your circumstance, he brings it in and he muzzles it so it cannot have the effect upon you as it would want to have. How does he do that? Understand God. He is our refuge. He is our security. He is our strength. He is our power. That's what he wants for whatever issue it is that you may be facing today. Maybe it's insecurity. 
Maybe you're inferior. Whatever it may be, you may have worry and doubts and fears. All kinds of things going on in our life. But I'm standing here today. I want to say to this congregation, God's real. And he's alive. And he's mighty. And he's not on my level. He's far above that. Be still and know that I am God. That's what God wants. Mother Teresa said it very well. You don't find God in all the noise of society. Oh, that's exciting. That's entertaining. Where do you find God? Be still and know that I am God. So I pray today that if you have circumstances, issues in your life, maybe you've kind of forgotten about God. He's still around. He's been around a long time. <laughs> God's eternal, isn't he? You know what that means? God had no beginning, and God has no ending. He's eternal. God has always existed. Everlasting life means from here on. Eternal life means no beginning and no ending. He's been around a long time, hasn't he? He knows exactly, he knows every hair upon your head. You believe the Bible? It's what the Bible says. He knows everything about what you're going through right now. He knows the fears, anxiety, depression, marriages, the hurts, the pains. He's God. Be still and know that I'm God.